Ah, oh, hello there. It's week 33 of quarantine and lockdown and I'm in the middle of my revamping here. So, let me show you what I've been up to, shall I? Everything has been moved out of the bottom. All the, the yokes are gone, the pedals are gone, anything that is of any weight is now gone to make sure that I can move this. I even have the pedestal. I got it suspended by rope here so that when I move the simulator to the side it will move with it. It has wires that are attached so I have to I have to move it all in one one piece. And here's where all of the stuff has gone to that was part of the simulator. Look at it, it's scattered all over the bedroom, on the bed, on the floor, on the chairs, it's everywhere. And this week I have received the stands and the brackets for the television sets and I also received the three big screen televisions as well. Here you can see one of the stands. I've got it all assembled and it's ready to go. You can see the wheels at the bottom and I've got it to the approximate height. And over here you can see the top of the stand. Basically these things just hook on and then they use a screw at the bottom to hold it in place. There is a tightener at the side so I can make sure that it is vertical. And then it just hooks on, screws into place. Now I've already adjusted this so that it's at the right height just like the first one that you saw. And it's on wheels so it'll be easy to move. That's not bad, that's not bad. And here you can see the stand with the television attached to it. And I've even got the power cord attached to this one as you can see. Now it was set up it took two of us to get it onto this because television is about 30 kilograms in weight. The stand is rated for 50 kilograms, so plenty of leeway there. But I needed to have it set up and put in position so I could see that slope coming down from the glare shield and I needed to make sure that I had it at the right height and so I knew what the distance would be from the front to the instrument panel itself. Let me show you. So here's the screen pretty much in position and you can see where the instrument panel is and the screen reaches all the way up. So knowing where the bottom is going to be was very important because then I could measure the top. Right, here's the front of the screen and I've got it vertical here and I've got it level across the top. So we know what the height is needed for the main instrument panel. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a mark up here and I've got a line and this represents the top of the screen. And that's the screen that's going to fit against the wall. So I've determined how to find out where to put the holes and this is how I did it. 
Here's the monitor that will go against the wall here. It will mount on that. And I have that bracket. Now this is the bracket that goes on the wall. And it will go like that. But the question is, how high up or how low does it need to go? So, I first of all, of course, I've got to attach this to the back of the television set and it clicks into place. Now, I already know what my top line is going to be. So, I measure now from the top of the screen to the middle of where the hole will be. And that's 355 millimeters. So 355 millimeters. And that will be from the top to here. So I've got the top marking right here. And I need to go down 355 millimeters. And here's where I can measure that. So 355 from the top of the screen to the middle of where these holes will be. And then once I've got that, then I'll level this up, draw the holes through this template, and then I'll know exactly where I'm going to drill the holes to hold that plate that holds the television screen on this particular wall. And then to make sure that the top of it lines up with the screen on the right and the screen on the left. At least that's my plan. What do you think? Is it gonna work? Yes, no, votes, no? Oh, don't worry about it. Of course it's going to work. <laughs> Would I steer you wrong? Well, there you are. Televisions have arrived, the stands have arrived, I've got the stands all assembled, got the tops measured so I know the height and I know how much beneath. I've got the positions ready on the wall. All I've got to do now is drill the holes. I'll get a little bit of help at the weekend in order to be able to lift these large monitors into place because it's not something I can do on my own. It's, uh, they're a little bit too big and awkward. And if I drop one, well, that's a chunk of change to be uh, forking out. But things are looking up. Things are looking up. Now, I've been asked several times, how much does all this stuff cost? Hmm. Well, it's hard to put a figure on it because I've been buying these things bit by bit over the past 16 or 17 years. I started out with one monitor, one computer and a joystick. That's how I started out with FSX, believe it or not. And from there it went into two monitors and then it went to three monitors. Then I moved to P3D because, you know, FSX would not support more than three monitors. And then I got an MCP and then I got an EFIS and then I managed to get a yoke and I got some pedals and I got a throttle quadrant. And then, you know, all this spread out over a number of years. And then I was using touch screens for the overhead until I could finally afford to get an overhead for myself. So then that came. So then I started to build a main instrument panel out of wood and put the pieces in there and using monitors for the, for the screens, touch screens as well, until finally I was able to afford to buy the main instrument panel itself. That was about two or three years ago. And then I assembled that and got it to where it has been for a number of years now. Of course, I was using a projector during all of that time and two side monitors, but that didn't work out too well, especially when it's running on one computer. 
So I'm going now to a second computer. And because I'm going to a second computer, I'm also able to buy these large screens and that will add a lot more realism to the simulator. So having a guess, I don't know. I suppose if there was a fire and I had to get uh, money to replace everything the way it was, uh, $25,000 or pounds would be probably about right. Perhaps a bit more. Who knows, because things have gone up in price since I first started doing all of this. It's, uh, it's been quite, quite an adventure doing all of this, you know. It really has. I've rather enjoyed it. And now, of course, I've got the time to be able to make all of these latest renovations because the UK is going into lockdown, total lockdown. The whole country is going to be locked down for four more weeks. <laughs> How about that? Four more weeks. Uh, well, I could say a lot about it, but I'm not going to on this video. So that's where we are. It keeps me off the streets. It keeps me busy. It keeps me from going out of my mind, you know, being locked up at home, etc. Yeah, I feel like I'm under house arrest, except, no, nope, there's no ankle bracelet down there saying that I'm locked up, so I must be locked down. Is there a difference? Probably not. Anyway, I hope that this video has caught you up with where I'm at. Now I have to get started drilling some holes and get the plates on there ready to mount. So, I'll update you in a little bit, okay? Stay safe, stay well. Bye.